Hello and welcome to StartupChampions2.0, the show where you meet national startup award winning founders. In today's episode, you will meet startup champions from the environment industry. These are Lutil and Innocule. Imagine you are traveling on a highway with your family and you have to find a clean restroom. You have all faced it. It's a nightmare. Women use several sprays to somehow save themselves from major diseases. Or you have to find a large hotel where you can get a hygienic environment. Our first startup champion is solving exactly this problem. Not only on the highways, but within the cities too. Let's now see the story of Lutel. First, we need to change the perception to people. Whenever the public toilet word came in your mind, so there is one image, a stinking image in your mind. Obviously, we have a prior public toilet. We wanted to change that image first of all. It should not look like the public toilet first of all. It should be the user friendly. It should be the something innovative for that. That's why we design in that way. The problem behind of the public toilet is that ecosystem. The ecosystem of the maintenance and management. Ecosystem of financial sustainability. These are the two big financial sustainability and the maintenance and management system. There was a lacking in that. So we were started to how can we make it a public toilet actually sustainable. So we have uh, thought the idea Lutel Cafe the uh, toilet behind the cafe. We have designed in such a way, if you are standing in front of the toilet, you will not see the cafe. And if you are standing in front of the cafe, you will not see the toilet. We are restroom, which is more uh, hygiene compared to the normal conventional toilet. We have made a concept of the pay, use and redeem. Uh, uh, in that, uh, you need to pay for washroom. You will get a clean and hygiene restroom for that. And there is a 10 rupees charger for that. Once you have used the washroom, you can use it there. 10 rupees coupon on the cafeteria. So you will get the same amount discount on the cafeteria. So Yashwant and Neelam, welcome to Startup Champions 2.0. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's start with our first question. Lou and a cafe, very, very unique idea. How many looters do you already have across the country? Uh, right now we have four looters and the uh, MP in those and Bilaspur Chhattisgarh and Tamil Nadu Ramishram. Interesting, and are you also planning to expand them very soon? Yeah, this year we are expanding very quickly. We are coming with the 15 to 20 outlet more. Interesting. Uh, now you have a 3R philosophy in your company. Mm. So what's this 3R? Just explain to our, our viewers um, you know, what this 3R philosophy is. So we have started in uh, as a Lutel cafe, as a restroom cafe. Sure. After the COVID, we have changed and upgraded in our model. So we came with the concept recharge, refresh and refuel. Recharge your vehicle, refresh your body and refuel your tummy. So it's like a complete take a break concept. So you are fundamentally saying that, uh, you know, imagine that uh, I have an electronic vehicle, I come near a Lutel, uh, I'm able to recharge my vehicle, I'm able to refuel my body, my body as well as uh, you know, use, uh, use your restroom and your cafe as well. This is fantastic. Uh, tell me something, what's your business model? How do you guys actually make money? So uh, before COVID, uh, companies are investing in the uh, capex model completely sure. after and the, now we are working on the franchise business model in franchise business model we have a 3r model and we are coming with the like a franchisee business of the public toilet in, in india first time sure sure there's so the franchise business model so fa so fundamentally um, you know you will make money when more franchises happen right uh, and you're saying that four of your uh, current uh, establishments they're all franchisees no that's how all are the company owned they're company owned so yeah. you will actually be making your first ever franchisee very very soon yeah. very interesting and and what's the kind of interest that you're getting from across the country because a cafe and a loo together i do understand hygienic loo is a great problem to solve by the way right uh, what's the kind of interest that you're getting from people people are very surprised especially females Whenever I got a lot of call from the females when they are traveling to the indoor and some other, is there your toilet is open or not? Wow. And that's an amazing response for us. And that's our aim. And, and tell me something, can I actually, just like, um, you know, using a lot of map applications that we do on our phones, can I actually map down your toilet somewhere in a city? Yeah, in the, we are in the Google, simple. You just type down the smart toilet near me and in our area, you will get it. Wow, phenomenal. So. Uh, any of you, if you're actually traveling in any of the cities where a Lutel is available, uh, you know, you can just use a basic map application and point down a smart toilet near you. This is fantastic. Uh, you know, from that, let's now move to your marketing strategy. Uh, so what exactly is your marketing strategy? How do you, how do you engage franchisees? And also, look, having a franchisee is one thing. So you are a B2B as well as a B2C company. Right. Yeah. So how do you engage the end consumers to come and spend time and get recharged uh, and refueled at your uh, cafes? 
so uh, actually we are not a crowd puller our marketing strategy is like a, we are going only those places where we can li- take a leverage of the crowd like a transit places tourist places pilgrim places we are on highways also so we are right now focusing we are the startup so we are currently focusing on the uh, these kind of the places jahan, uh, where we can take a uh, leverage of crowd that's fantastic that's actually a big lesson for all of you the audience uh, remember this very very carefully right uh, they have played it very very smartly wherever there is an audience already existing wherever there is a large crowd they are actually establishing a lootel there which is actually very favorable for all of your franchises as well because the franchises won't have to spend that money, money. you know to 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 market themselves uh, let's come on to your sales strategy now now how did you uh, get your um, you know your your first sale ever so um, of course you've established your uh, own establishment till date but i'm sure you would be very very close to making the first sale happen how close are you to that so first sale, uh, sale was very easy like we sure. have settled on the right place sure. if if you are a startup and you are on the right place you will get a right sales because we have first outlet on the bus stand ah interesting so that first stand you have a 10000 people per day of course so day one we have a revenue from that nice very interesting so so literally uh, every lootel literally you're saying on day one it's cash making yeah That's and uh, within a one month we are operational pp very interesting okay mm. and and this is what you tell to your franchises as well yeah interesting okay uh, my next question to you is um, is how do you fund this so uh, right from day one how did you fund all of this uh, right uh, because of course creating the first lootel would have costed some money that's for sure right uh, so tell our viewers uh, something about how much does it really cost to establish an entire lootel um, and uh, how did you fund it on day one and today have you raised any external funding so uh, initial funding was around 12 to 15 lakh rupees sure. and uh, whatever money we have saved for our house and boring uh, uh, initial savings and wow. boring from the friends and family we have st- started our sure. first outlet sure. and uh, till now we are the bootstrap we are the fundamentally uh, sound Very actually good. so we are bootstrap we are growing by ourselves only uh, we are coming growing by the franchise yeah. business now fantastic of course so there's there's no better money by the way than the customers money my last question to you is look millions of indians today are watching you there might be entrepreneurs students professionals every kind of person is watching you what's your message to all of them so my clear message to the people is like a vision you should have a vision in your mind and vision should not be the materialistic it should it can't be the car and bike and house it should be some place where you want to reach there wow if you will reach there you will get all the by product there interesting so so get your goal right and get your destination right yeah. that's what you're saying interesting so for you audience the top two important lessons from this entire session are number 1 solve a problem that you experience in daily life that you experience number 2 business should be like ice cream simple to understand and explain it's as simple as that it's time for a very very short break but don't go anywhere on the other side you will meet the next startup champion they will show you how to make gold from soil and build a business worth crores so do not miss even a single second of this episode i'll see you on the other side welcome back to startup champions to dot o it's now time to meet our second startup champion do you know the largest statue in the world the statue of unity largest dams largest buildings largest bridges they all use steel in construction but making high quality steel is no easy task india has set a target to reach 300 million metric tons of steel production by 2030 at present we are at 120 mmt the efficiency of these companies depends upon the ores that they extract from the earth the quality of this ore leads to increased or decreased production what if there was a way to increase this efficiency even if the ore was not of the highest grade good question right this is exactly what our startup champion does let's now see the inocule story when i was searching for my business idea then i thought if we some something can be done for mineral industries which is non glamorous so not many people try to enter into this area if we can do something which that will be you know spectacular considering the fact that mining industry contribute 3% to our gdp around 2.3 million people are employed and the good thing is that um, you know all employment generations are in the uh, class 3 or rural areas when we uh, we thought that we will start in oculin 2014 i came here uh, the first agency with we, with whom we interacted was a government agency csir lab when we told them that we want to have a research collaboration 
and uh, want to develop something with a shared IP that the patent can be shared, they ready, readily agreed. We are minimizing the waste generated by the um, uh, bears process um, mod. So one ton of alumina will produce 2.7 ton of red mod. Out of red mod, we are eco-friendly generating scandium, uh, rare earths, as well as the 30% of the red mod, we will process through extract, re, uh, re, re, uh, reprocess to extract the alumina by bears process use. So Gyan and Surbhi, welcome to Startup Champions 2.0. Let's start with the first question itself. How did you fundamentally discover this problem? Yeah, after 2003, I, when I graduated from IIT Bombay, I joined Indian Oil. Okay. And I was working in Panipat refinery. Okay. And uh, uh, it, was, it was December 2005 when I planned to visit my ho hometown in uh, Raurkela, eastern part okay. of India. Sure. And uh, while traveling back, back, I thought I'll meet one of my friends sure. uh, who was a senior in IIT Bombay. He was doing metallurgical engineering. Okay. And he joined um, a steel company in a mining division. Interesting. So Interesting. what happened is actually uh, for an IIT and it was a non-traditional uh, sec uh, sector course. because they always go for consultancy or Correct. you know higher studies Correct. and all. So I thought I'll just go in and meet him and try to explore if something of chemical uh, engineering can be utilized sure. because being a chemical engineer. Sure. I went and met him. And uh, when, I, uh, when I met him, he was very upbeat because the uh, productions were all time high. He was producing more than what the plant was designed for. Wow. And uh, naturally he was uh, aiming for a uh, quick promotion. So of in course. one year, <laughs> so that is what was happening. And uh, so uh, we, we exchanged a few things and then we left, I right. left. And I got a, another chance to meet him again for the same reason to visit my home after seven years. Sure. After seven years when I visited him, I found a different Ramesh. Ramesh is a South Indian guy, very humble, always jolly, sure. uh, jovial person. Sure. But at that time he was very tensed. I, t I told him what happened. Uh, he said, uh, see, uh, the, what happened is at that time I got promoted. Okay. Now I am the plant head. Sure. But the, what the problem is actually the in seven years we have uh, gone deep down the mines and the ore quality has changed. And the, the same plant, which was giving say 1,000 tons, now it is gi uh, giving me only 300 tons in the in some of the wow. seasons. So uh, the what I what I realized is the um, the ore quality has degraded, sure. and that's why the plant has uh, behaved inefficiently. And that is what at that time Inokil was not formed. Got it. So, so it that, that's where the problem started. Interesting. So uh, you know, my second question, of course, is can you give us an example of how a certain element or a molecule uh, can be used to add value and build wealth? Right. You've literally created gold out of soil. Uh, give us an experiment. Show, show our viewers how how did that happen. Yeah, uh, before before I'll uh, I'll just I'll tell you uh, what Inocul does is they, they, we try to solve uh, um, low grade iron ore processing not uh, mineral processing by three routes. One is waste minimization. Right. Minimization minimization mean, means we either we try to uh, upgrade the uh, uh, reduce the waste generation sure. or utilize it. Sure. So I'll give you an example. Uh, please, can you please pass on? Yes. So uh, oh, sorry. here you go. Yeah, all the gold in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is a, this is a waste of the aluminium industry. Let me help you right there. Go ahead. So, this is a uh, waste of the aluminium industry. So, you know, we we generate around 180 tons uh, uh, worldwide, 180 tons, a million metric tons. So, you're of saying this, this is waste. waste? Yes, this is a waste. Okay. This is like this, this is like this, soil. This, this seems like soil, right? Yeah, this is I hazardous can, waste. They cannot can dump it? it. Yeah, yeah, you can touch, but. Be, be careful, yeah. Yes, it is. It is soil. Yes. Wow. Okay. So we uh, worldwide, worldwide we generate one seventy-five million metric tons of this okay. every year. Okay. And we have around uh, probably say seven point five or eight billion uh, metric tons of this waste dumped inside industries. They they cannot dump outside, so it is basically inside their wow. their floor. Wow. So we we started actually we thought if we can utilize it and try to make some value addition. Sure. And that's how. The plate. So that's how from this we tried making and uh, making this product. This is a rare earth. We are trying to extract few rare earth from this, and this is very high value. And uh, rare rare earth, as the name so suggests. So just this little white powder. Yeah. You are saying is rare earth. Rare earth. And elements. this is high value. Very high value. And this has come from this. This yes. Wow. See the color difference. Correct. 
Correct. And 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 what what is it used in? What, what do you do with this? Yeah. So this is this is scandium, and this is used in very high end applications of aerospace. Aluminium, scandium alloy, they can sustain very high temperature, and in high temperature also they give a lot of strength. So in aerospace defense applications, this is used. Very interesting. So you have literally converted waste to gold, and that, my dear audience, you've today seen an incredible moment right in front of your eyes. I think uh, this is totally phenomenal. You know, they've actually used science to convert waste to gold. Uh, so tell me something now. What's your business model, right? How do you guys make money? Uh, we first our R&D team they develop chemicals. Okay. Uh, once we chemical is developed, then we sell to the uh, clients. Uh, we study their operations. So we have okay. uh, at, along with the chemical supply, we give on the site uh, services. Because actually we understood over the time that the um, uh, our clients are they busy in production. Sure, sure. So we have to understand the, their operations and we have to help them optimize this uh, chemical very process. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, so sales per service. It, it all starts with R and D. Uh, yes. You create a product, uh, you of course uh, you know sell it to them, and then the service. Yes. Interesting. And that was going to be my second question. So, what's your sales and marketing strategy? Do you actually demo your product to your customers? How do how do they buy it from you? Uh, we see the initially initially we had to study one of the problems, and sure. then we have to approach door to door. Now that we are well known, all major steel plants are right. clients. All major mineral houses are our right. clients. So uh, sometimes when they face problem. Uh, you know, you know, cool name comes to their mind. Uh, uh, so they come and tell, this is what the problem is, can you solve this? Great lesson for all of you. If you are solving a good problem and if your customers, they trust you, uh, there's nothing stopping your growth. Uh, my last question to the both of you is, look, uh, lakhs of Indians are watching you today. Uh, look, uh, we, are, we are actually in a very different times. We are in the times of social media. Everyone wants to just write code and become a billionaire. Right, but you have created a venture that is so very different. You are actually helping uh, our steel companies create, uh, you know, more steel, increase their efficiency. Right. Um, so, what's your message to all of the Bharat watching you today? One message is, of course, that uh, you know, uh, you are when you are creating a business, so you are creating wealth not just for yourself, but for entire your entire community wow. and society. So that is something and uh, go for something which you really believe in and uh, yeah and then that, that's way that's the how the road opens up for you. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I'll add to three points. Sure. First is, uh, um, one is if you are, you want to do business only for money, huh. then please don't do this. There should be some mo something else which Very you good. should motivate that first. Second, uh, the another alternative alternative to do uh, to start your own is join an earliest company sure. i always i always people say people if everybody starts doing business then who will make it grow <laughs> so joining an earliest company is also almost equal like starting your own right third sometimes we wait for the perfect pr product to be launched right. and then only right. don't wait for the pr perfect product in fact in, in our first product also we first it was failed and then only we launched our second product and that was a hit. Wow. I, I want to sort of quickly catch a keyword from here. You said wealth, you said money. I have a question for you, a bonus question for our audience, okay? Uh, so what's your revenue figures? What was the last year revenue that you guys did? Last year we were 20.65 crores. So. Phenomenal! 20.65 crores was the last year's revenue and I'm sure you are on your track to do at least 50 crores this year. Yes, <laughs> yes. Now you understand that if you really understand science, if you solve the right problem, you can build a company worth crores and they are doing this revenue. Imagine what multiple will they get when they do their valuation. They're at least a 100 crore company or, or possibly right there right now, right? Which is fantastic. So for all of you, the top two lessons of the session are there is gold in waste if you know science. And number two, to solve large problems, you must know large problems that have deep impact. That is what they've done. Don't look for best friends. Look for best problems. It's time for a very, very short break now, but don't go anywhere because right after this break, we will have audience questions and answers being given by our startup champions. I'll see you on the other side of this break. Welcome to Startup Champions 2.0 once again. This is the time for your questions and answers from our startup champions. Are you guys ready for our audience's questions? All right, so the first question uh, from our audience is as follows. My question is, when someone take your franchise, what support you give them to ensure the franchise? So, first of all, we have created a system. We are the tech-based operational 
uh, system created like it so we are giving the complete back end support like sure. we are giving the technology operational monitoring system to them we are doing the cctv surveillance to them we are arranging the whole supplier management for centralized supplier billing that centralized the billing system there sure. so you can say the back end we are operating the that toilet you are just in the front end you are acting as our sop so you are we, we have developed the sop for that so we are making more simple for the operations that we are targeting we are doing the cctv surveillance for them we are taking care of the whole part of we are doing the whole mis report for them let, let me build on that question uh, since you said mis uh, do you also help your franchisee owners with understanding their pnl yeah we do have a complete the pnl report there we are we can tell you that if you got a 100 rupee revenue right. the each penny where is going there wow then the with the percentage also that's also your revenue supply and that salary in cost and that Got we it. have created backend system for that got it got it great so i think you got a great answer to your question now is the time for our second question uh, from the audience please come on screen and ask your question hello my name is lalit kumar from haryana my question is when you hiring in your company what are the key quality are you looking for let me start from our vision so our vision is uh, in long run what do we want to do we want to understand science and bring it its use for the betterment of the society so love for science is one first basic criteria that we look for in somebody who is coming as a scientist or you know most of the things they should be having inquisitiveness right second is entrepreneurial spirit because we are actually a startup mm -hmm. and most of the things are uh, most of the time we are actually on the uh, you know uh, fire fighting mode sure so uh, that is one thing we see entrepreneurial spirit who is ambitious who want to grow fast and uh, mm, so this is the best platform so these two are actually the main thing got it so now you know if you want to work with inocule what are the two important skills that you must have in you and do write to the founder and ceo who knows you might just get hired by them next up learning leads to earning you all know this let's continue our journey of learning with step number 7 of how to start a startup the step number 7 is register your company Till now you have learned about idea validation MVP and business plan now you are ready to register your company hire i am going to give you two important uh, uh, steps just just note them down uh, and i'll give you probably one bonus step as well so number one hire a virtual cfo to manage your registration and compliances virtual cfos are people look as a small company you can't really hire a cfo i'm sure you you guys wouldn't have a cfo as a yes. pr right because they would ideally take a salary of probably a crore uh, you know from you but for smaller companies uh, you know a virtual cfo would be a fantastic solution uh, this is somebody with great experience um, you know that is sitting anywhere across india and would help you register your company and uh, do all the compliances number 2 is uh, register your company with dp iit as well so that you get all the advantages of startup india are you guys registered with dp iit yes yes, yes. fantastic yeah. great uh, and number 3 hire a good legal firm to create your contracts look a lot of important contracts would be created while you are hiring people the uh, contractual agreements while you are creating certain partners the contractual agreements you need all of these contracts in place uh, such that you don't scramble every Where you can even hire a good uh, CA firm to do this. I hope you got the most important point. Step number seven is important, such that your startup grows with speed and you grow aggressively and become a successful company. It's now time to say goodbye. I am very very sure that this episode was extremely valuable for you. Share your feedback with us, make your videos, and post them with the official hashtag hash Startup Champions too, and send them on the email ID given below. In the next episode you will meet startup champions from the health and wellness industry. Thank you for watching Startup Champions Today. Jai Hind. 95% of people with diabetes actually reside. The largest impact that we've been able to see is the the spectrum of people that whose lives we we've, we've been able to change. Imagine if detecting cancer at a much early stage was as easy as a scan and 5 minutes. This is exactly what our startup champion does. If we can have some device that can detect early we can create an impact in the society